Neuromuscular Blocking Agents Introduction Neuromuscular blocking agents block the transmission of the action potential at the neuromuscular junction, causing partial or complete muscle paralysis. These agents are mostly used in surgical and intensive care settings, where muscle contraction should be inhibited, including endotracheal intubation to relax muscles of the throat, surgery to induce muscle paralysis and to keep the patient still, and also in blocking respiratory muscles for the patients who are under ventilatory support. These are also used in conditions like intensive shivering with hypothermia, severe asthmatic attacks, status asthmaticus, severe coughing with hemoptysis, blood in the sputum, and high intracranial pressure. Classification of Neuromuscular Blocking Agents Neuromuscular blocking agents are classified according to their interaction with nicotinic acetylcholine receptors at the neuromuscular junction. The main two types of neuromuscular blocking agents are split into depolarizing and non-depolarizing types based on their mechanism of action. Both block the binding of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to the motor implant. Succinylcholine, the only depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent in use, produces skeletal muscle relaxation by binding directly with neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors to cause prolonged depolarization. They are used mostly for endotracheal intubation. Non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents act as competitive antagonists, competing with acetylcholine for the binding sites at the neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, preventing the initiation of the action potential. Examples include curoniums, like pancuronium, becuronium, and rocuronium, as well as curiums, like cisatricurium, atricurium, and mebicurium. These agents are used for surgical paralysis and to inhibit intense shivering and coughing. Cisatricurium is currently the most popular intensive care unit agent. Rocuronium and becuronium are intermediate acting steroidal neuromuscular blocking agents. Pancuronium and pipecuronium are the only available long-acting steroidal neuromuscular blocking agents. Pipecuronium is no longer used clinically. Rocuronium. Rocuronium has a faster onset than other non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents. Thus, rocuronium may be used at higher doses as an alternative to succinylcholine for rapid sequence intubation. How do neuromuscular blocking agents work? The type of neuromuscular block determines the response to peripheral nerve stimulation used for monitoring the effects of neuromuscular blocking agents. The neuromuscular junction consists of the presynaptic motor neuron, a synaptic cleft or gap, and the postsynaptic surface of the myocyte. As an electrical signal in a motor nerve reaches the presynaptic nerve terminal, depolarization occurs and acetylcholine is released via calcium channel mediated exocytosis into the synaptic cleft. This cleft is home to acetylcholinesterase, the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine. 50% of the released acetylcholine is cleaved by acetylcholinesterase and the remaining molecules bind to postsynaptic neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the motor end plate, which causes ion channels to open. When enough channels are opened, the myocyte is depolarized and muscle contraction occurs. Acetylcholine remaining in the synapse is rapidly degraded by acetylcholinesterase and the muscle is allowed to repolarize. So let's see how these drugs inhibit normal muscle contraction. The mechanism varies between the two types of drugs. Non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents occupy the acetylcholine receptor which competes with the acetylcholine for receptor binding. This prevents the action of acetylcholine and prevents depolarizing the myocyte and inducing muscle contraction. Dosing and Pharmacokinetics of Neuromuscular Blocking Agents Neuromuscular blocking agents are all intravenous drugs. Succinylcholine is specifically used for intubation because of its short duration of action, usually just several minutes. This is beneficial because we only want a paralyzing effect for a shorter period of time. 
Within 30 seconds after intravenous administration of succinylcholine, patients experience fasciculations from depolarization and antidromic activation of unparalyzed portions of the motor unit. Flaxid paralysis ensues seconds later. The short action is mainly because of enzymatic degradation by the enzyme butyrol cholinesterase in the serum. Butyrol cholinesterase, pseudocholinesterase deficiency. In patients with atypical or deficient butyrol cholinesterase, recovery from succinylcholine and mebicurium can be prolonged. A variety of factors can reduce butyrol cholinesterase activity, but only modestly prolong paralysis with succinylcholine, including liver disease, renal failure, major burns, pregnancy, advanced age, oral contraceptives, and echothiophate eye drops. The non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents can act for minutes up to an hour or longer after intravenous dosing, depending on the specific drug. So, they are perfect for longer surgical procedures and prolonged intensive care unit ventilation. The most commonly used non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents are eliminated from the body, according to Hoffman elimination, in which the amine drug is degraded in the serum. This serum degradation is most effective with atricurium and cisatricurium, making them safest for patients with kidney or liver failure because they avoid renal or hepatic elimination. What are the adverse effects and drug interactions of neuromuscular blocking agents? Depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents adverse effects. Succinylcholine causes hyperkalemia. Therefore, it should not be used for patients with hyperkalemia. How does this happen? Remember that Unlike acetylcholine, succinylcholine does not just act locally after injection, but blocks all myocyte depolarization all over the body. When muscle cells depolarize, the inward sodium transit, increased potassium exits from cells into circulation. When depolarization happens on such a massive scale with succinylcholine, the serum potassium increases. Malignant hyperthermia. Succinylcholine is a known trigger for malignant hyperthermia, and its use is contraindicated in patients at risk for malignant hyperthermia. Other adverse effects include later muscle pain and increased intraocular pressure. Non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents adverse effects. The non-depolarizing agents generally have minimal adverse effects. Flushing. It's mild and mainly related to histamine release. Hypotension, due to the combined effect of autonomic nervous system blockade and histamine release. Anaphylaxis, aminoglobulin E mediated. It's rare, but most often occurs with succinylcholine and rocuronium. To reverse the longer acting, non depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents, use anticholinesterase drugs such as neostigmine or edrophonium. This prolongs the acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft, overcoming the competition of the neuromuscular blocking agents with acetylcholine for the acetylcholine receptor. Rocuronium and vecuronium may be reversed using the drug Sugamidex, which binds these agents in the serum and causes increased drug elimination. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.